Привет, как дела? That's hi, how are things in Russian, for those of you that don't know. Anyway, my name is Konstantin and I am the director and editor for KSI and Randolph's new music video, Red Alert. For those of you that haven't heard KSI and Randolph's new album, please do go check it out. The link is in the description. I've been ever so lucky to work on a couple music videos from that album and maybe we have a couple more coming up, you never know. I'm not gonna give away any secrets though. Last week I brought you guys on set to the Red Alert music video and I showed you guys the whole behind the scenes process of what it took to direct that music video. This week I want to show you guys how I edited the music video. I want to try to break it down into like a step-by-step -step process and make it as simple as possible for you guys to understand the whole workflow of the project. But just before we get into this, I have a quick message from our sponsor that's making this video possible and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in a variety of different sectors. And for those of you that are interested in videography and editing, this is the perfect website for you guys to check out. Skillshare have their own section just for film production. Anything down from editing, filming, color grading, directing, it's all there. And for those of you that are thinking about taking videography or your photography to the next level and make it your job, then I recommend checking out some business classes on Skillshare where you can learn stuff about accounting, freelancing, and just lessons on improving your general productivity. And the first 500 people to click the link in my description get a two month free trial and the annual subscription is less than $10 a month after that. And as much as I love teaching you guys about videography, filming and editing, I still recommend you check out some classes on there because they're super useful. They go a bit more in depth than I do, which is why I recommend it. Anyway, check out the link in the descriptions for yourselves and let me know what you thought about it. Because there's multiple ways of how to edit a music video, I'm not going to give you step-by-step -step instructions of this is how it should be done, don't do this, don't do that. I'm just going to give you my tips and tricks of how I went about doing this project. And for anybody asking, I use Premiere Pro to edit on. I think it's the best software out there for editing. I'm not saying anything bad about Sony Vegas or Final Cut Pro. They're just not the software for me. I guess they're great for beginners, but there is a little bit of a limit to those softwares. Premiere Pro is available for Mac and PC. However, the other two softwares, Final Cut, is only available for Mac and Sony Vegas, as far as I'm aware, is only available for Windows machines. So personally, someone like me who edits on my PC, but also edits on the go on my MacBook, I need the best of both. Right, step one, pretty straightforward, but it's import your footage. Now I like to import my footage from the media browser tab. I select all the clips I need to work with and drag them to the project. I just wanna emphasize how important it is to organize your footage and know where everything is going. So in my case, I placed all of my footage in different folders related to that scene that we were filming. So if it's footage of JJ outside on the horse, I'll make sure to put it in a folder called JJ exterior horse. And that way, when I've imported all of my footage, I know where everything is. Trust me, it will make your life a lot easier as an editor if you organize all your stuff beforehand. Otherwise, you can spend a really long time looking for that one clip that you need to use in your edit, or you might even miss out on the good bits. Once all my footage is organized, I also create a new folder where I store all of my sequences. I then create multiple sequences where I place all of the footage from those relevant scenes. Once everything's nice and neat on your project and you've organized everything, so you know where every little bit of footage is. It's time to go through the painful process of synchronizing all of your performance takes to the actual track. Now, if your camera recorded sound, it's a simple process. You can just match the audio that was recorded on your camera to your track on the timeline. However, ARRI cameras, RED cameras, they don't really have built-in microphones for some reason. I don't understand it. So that means my video did not have any audio track with it. So that meant I had to literally lip read what the guys were performing and then synchronize it myself, which was an extremely long process, as you can tell, because I've had tons and tons of performance takes. I'm pretty sure there's a more simple way to do this eventually on the day when you record the videos, but for some reason we didn't do that. So what I had to do was find bits where I actually understood what the guys were saying and then match it to the track. Yeah, it's as straightforward as that, but it was very time consuming. After spending a couple more hours doing this, I made sure that every single performance that we captured was synchronized. I guess that brings me on to step number three, which is making your selects. And what I mean by that is literally you have to look through every single bit of footage that you have and pick out the key moments that you think will make the video. So for me, there's a couple factors that I consider when I make my selects. The main one is, does the artist look good in this? And the second thing I look out for is the composition of the shot, the camera movement, is it in focus? what is the shot doing? What's it adding to my video? If all the criteria is met, I then put that piece of footage in a new sequence called select. Pretty uh, self-explanatory, right? 
So basically in that sequence is all my favorite bits of footage. That way in my edit, when I remember, oh, I remember this one good bit, I don't have to search around everywhere. I just go back into my select sequence and drag it from there to my timeline where I'm editing my music video. Now it might take you ages to filter throughout the whole of your footage that you've shot, but it's definitely worth it. If your piece of footage is a select from a performance and you can't drag it anywhere because it will move it out of sync, keep it on your timeline, but maybe label it a different color. We're almost getting to the end here. So basically step number four is take all of your selects and good bits and place them into a new timeline with your music. In this timeline, start constructing your music video. Give it some structure, you know, give it a beginning, middle and end. So the progression in our music video showed the guys starting off in the battlefield. We then moved them into the castle where they did their own individual performances and then a duo performance at the end at nighttime in front of the castle. After hours and hours of spending time and thinking where to place all the different clips, I was finally done with the video. After the guys saw the first edit, they decided to come round to fix it. <laughs> Basically, the first edit had too much going on. It was cutting from one shot to another shot way too quick, and we wasn't showing off all the beautiful cinematography that was captured on the day. Because we wanted this music video to feel like an actual film, sometimes you gotta hold the shots on for a bit more longer and let the audience really take in of what they're seeing. So the whole pace of the edit was slowed down and we was really selective with the shots that we were gonna use in our final edit. So after a couple of hours of changing things around, our edit was done. I didn't wanna use any special effects in this music video. However, I did use a handy little tool that gave me this effect. Believe it or not, it's not done in post. It's actually all captured in camera. And basically what it is, it's just a piece of glass that's in front of your lens, but because it's crafted in a certain way, it splits up the image into different directions. So it gives you really interesting results. So yeah, shout out to Prism Lens FX. They've got tons of new cool products coming out, which I'm looking to test out in the future. But for now, you can check out their Instagram, link in the description and all that good stuff. By the way, some of the performances in this music video were shot at a higher frame rate with the track sped up. And the result that comes out when it's converted back to 25 frames a second is incredible. It makes it look very surreal and slow motion whilst everything's still in sync. Damn, I'm on red alert. Now she went up in the dirt, man. I don't wanna hurt, man. Nah, I don't wanna hurt. Champagne popping, how I wanna let it rain. And they know that I'm on red alert. So quick example, if you sped up the track by two times, and you got your artist to lip sync and perform double the speed to that, you then slow it back down to its normal speed and it looks like everything's been done in slow motion. However, if you was to double the speed of your track, so for example, we're gonna do it to Red Alert now. It's pretty hard to keep up with, I'm not gonna lie. Instead of 200%, if you sped it up to maybe 150%, which is half of that, then it sounds something like this. which is a lot more manageable to keep up with. So once I'm happy with the speed of the track, I then have to increase the frame rate that we film at. So if our original video has to be at 25 frames and we've increased it by a half, 25 divided by two is 12.5. And then 12.5 plus 25 is 37.5. Luckily for us, the cameras that we were working with allow you to set a custom frame rate. However, I know most DSLR and mirrorless cameras don't allow you to do that. So unfortunately, you might not be able to try this at half the speed. You might be able to have a crack yourself at double the speed, but again, your track will be a lot more quicker. So filming at 50 frames could be your only option really. Anyway, once we've shot the performance at 37.5 frames a second, once I put my footage back into my timeline and try to sync it with the song at 25 frames a second, it fits perfectly perfectly with the sync. And again, the look that it gives us, it's a lot more graceful in terms of performance wise and everything's a bit more slow motion. Uh, humble beginnings and now I make a strides. Uh, ain't nothing changed but the rhythm and the rhymes. Through the dice, yeah, now I'm living life, yeah. I'm on the road and I got all of the lights, yeah. 
it's a very, very popular technique that's used in a lot of music videos. The first time I saw this technique used was in a video by Coldplay called Yellow, and that's where the guy was walking down the beach and performing to camera. So I used that technique mainly for the slower parts of the track, like the chorus. And then for the verses, we went back to the normal speed of the song. Also, another thing that makes a good edit, in my opinion, is having a thought process behind why you want to show a certain shot. I use more close-up shots of the guys on parts of the track where I felt they had more emotion to deliver. The highlight of a track is usually the start of the chorus and that's where the song starts to hype up. So you'll notice that in my edit for the drop on the chorus I usually tend to use wide cinematic shots to reveal the scene. Also for example on the last chorus just after Randall's verse I tease in the castle shot just a tiny bit and then as soon as the chorus drops we go into the big wide establishing shot of the castle and the fire flames spitting in the background. So yeah, having a little thought process behind what type of shot you're gonna use for what bit of the track is something that could either make your edit really impressive or just kind of average. Also, the whole color grade process is done after the edit is finished and that actually was done by a professional color grader. Before the shoot, I pulled out loads of different references of how I wanted my color grade to look like and one of my references was from the film Macbeth. So this whole red look that we had in all of our daytime exterior shots, I feel like it fitted very well with the theme of the song. So big shout out to Alex, the color grader, and thank you to The Mill for having us. And that's pretty much it, you lot. I feel like I've covered everything. If you feel like I haven't, please do leave comments below. I will try to go through as many as possible. I hope this video has satisfied some of you that have been asking me to get into the whole editing side of things. And don't forget the first 500 people to use my link in the description for Skillshare get a special discount. Like I mentioned in the intro of my video, Skillshare is particularly useful if you wanna take up some new classes and learn more things. And in this case, I guess you're here for editing advice. So yeah, check out some classes on there. Let me know if you found any useful ones out there that you think I should check out. Until then, I'll see you next time. I'm still rolling with my gang and my G squad and my team. Try the commotion. It ain't nothing to write for the bro them. Like, la-di-da-di-da-da-da. la di da di Eyes on the gang when we walk in at the party.